Hi, this is Mark Cook for Kit Planes. If you've been around aviation very long, you probably recognize this. Now, it's not something we stole from the Wild Wings to keep your hot wings hot. There's a landing light. It's actually the prototypical 4509. You've seen it on hundreds and hundreds of Cessnas and Pipers, and it's been around for a long time. It's actually a tractor light, and it's not a particularly good landing light. We've all kind of put up with it over the years because that's what a lot of the GA airplanes used. A lot of home belts, of course, go their own way, but even today, this 4509, which happens to be in the PAR 36 size, which is the smaller of the two typical landing light sizes, is really pretty obsolete. But what's replaced it is this. This is the AeroLED's Equinox. Now, this is a PAR 36 14 volt landing light. It's got two different beam patterns built in. There's a taxi version and a landing version. Now the primary differences are the landing light is a conical tight focus, a lot like the 4509, although it's got a, a broader spread, and it aims its light right down the center of the runway and it's an extremely intense view. Now the other trick that this thing has is it has a taxi version. Now it doesn't have quite the amount of illumination but what it does is it opens up two little pockets of, of light kind of left and right of the nose of the airplane and pointed down just a little bit. This is extremely handy for picking out taxiways and seeing your way around on the ground. The way this works is actually pretty clever. So as you see on the back of there's, there's only two terminals for the main power. When you power it one way, it goes into the taxi mode. When you reverse the polarity, it actually goes into the landing light mode. Now, the, really the only complication this sets up for you is if you have a, a landing light that is powered through a switch breaker. Obviously, those can't control polarity, so you're going to have to have an external switch that allows you to select between taxi and landing forms. Now, the Equinox has a, another trick to it as well. It's got a built-in wigwag feature or flashing feature. Now, there's another terminal on the back. You'll see that there's a, a little pigtail of wires in addition to the main power wires. If you connect up the yellow wire to power, not ground, but to power, it actually tells the landing light to flash. Now it'll do that in either of the forms, either the taxi or the landing light form. The other thing you'll see on the back of this is another set of wires, and that's to synchronize another landing light. So if you have an Equinox, say, in each wingtip, you can get it to flash those alternately. All right, so the name of the game in LED lighting really is illumination, and it's power. And these things are really, really powerful. Well, how powerful? I did a couple of tests to, to find out just how much more powerful and how much more illumination it provides than a 4509. I set up a, a little test here in the hangar. I could turn all the lights off, close the doors, and control the ambient lighting. And I walked around with this, which is a lux meter. Now, a quick aside, you're going to hear a couple of different terms when it comes to LED lighting in the intensity. One is candela, okay? That's how much power actually comes out of the light in a specific way. This one happens to be rated for 150,000 candela at its highest setting, a little bit less on the taxi mode. But lux is also a measure of how much light is hitting a specific surface. Now, the way I set this up was the, the T-hanger is about 25 feet deep. I set the lights at one end, shine them at the center of the door opening with the doors closed, and walked around with the Lux meter. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples. We'll go to a graphic here so it's a little bit more clear. With the Equinox on its most powerful beam, which is the landing light beam, right at the center is producing more than 2,800 Lux. Now, of course, we're looking at a beam that has a specific, rather narrow focus, so you would expect as we move off center, we're going to lose a little bit of the illumination, and that happens to be true. So if we go from 2,800 right on center, we go to about 2,100 at one foot. At two feet, we're about 1,500 lumens. At three feet, we're about 850 lumens. And at four feet, we're at 429 lumens. Now, I'll overlay what the 4509 did in just a second. But it is important to understand that this is a fairly narrow focus beam. The further you get off the center, the less illumination there is. And by the way, that's, this is a conical uh, beam pattern. So as I measure off to the left or right, it really accounts for the same thing up and down. Now, when we change this to the taxi mode, it really does change things a lot. So we go to the center, and it's about 800 lumens. It starts to taper off to about 550, to about 480 as we get out to two feet about 300 at 3 feet, and about 215 at 4 feet. However, there are a couple of pockets that are low into the outside uh, of that main beam pattern that are around 300 lumens that you're not going to see on the focus beam. So even though the overall illumination numbers don't seem to be as high, the practical illumination when you put this thing into the taxi mode is actually quite effective. So let's compare that to the 4509. 
So we know the 4509 has a really tight spot beam, and it proved to be true in this little test in the hangar. Right at the center line, the peak number was about 1,250 lux. Okay, so that's less than half of what this thing did at its peak. As you move out one foot, it drops to 620 lux. From there, it's 210. And out at three feet, it's down to 40 lux. So when you look at this by the eye or by the lux meter, it's really dropped off. And it's very, very obvious what's happening there. So even though this is still considered a spot beam, that beam is much wider and it's so much more powerful at the center that even when you have the drop off, you're still way ahead of the game compared to the 4509. So that's all theoretical, that's all in the hangar. Let's go take a flight with both of these and I'll show you what it looks like from the pilot's eye view. So here's a typical takeoff with the 4509. In this particular case, it's in my glass star and it's mounted uh, just below and to the left of the spinner in pretty typical fashion for the airplane. And as you roll onto the, t or onto the runway, Again, you're just seeing a little bit of the center line stripe. Pretty much as soon as you rotate, you lose all light, and it's all about the ambient light. Now we come back around for the landing. It's pretty much a dark hole until you get to short, short, final. Then you start to pick out just a little bit of the center line, figure out where you are, and make the landing. As you go to taxi back in, same situation. You have a little tiny sp spot beam of light, and anything off to the sides is in complete darkness. Now this makes it a bit of a challenge, to find a dark taxiway or to find your way back in to the hangar on a really dark night. Now let's compare that to the Equinox. Now clearly on takeoff we have a lot more light on the runway and it's a lot easier on the pilot. Now as we come back around to land it's the same situation. The Equinox in the landing light mode is throwing a ton more light on the runway and you're starting to pick up uh, the runway markings, the center line and the runway number way sooner than you are with a 4509. Now here's something else that's interesting. After the landing, in this particular case, I switched over to the taxi. Now you'll notice the beam goes wider and closer to the airplane, but you can see a lot further off to the left and right. That really pays dividends as you're taxiing back to your hangar where you can actually see to both sides. So I think that really sums it up. The combination of really good defensible measured numbers as well as a very, very strong subjective performance. Yes, it's an expensive landing light. It's $850. But when you fly a lot at night or you really care about conspicuity, there's got to be some value in that. Plus, compared to a 4509, you'll probably never have to replace this. It may be the last landing light your home-built airplane needs. Thanks for watching. I'm Mark Cook with Kit Planes Magazine. We'll see you on our next video.